Okay, good morning. So to continue the unit one, which is recognizing business opportunities, we were going to tackle about creativity and innovation in business ideas. So creativity uh, is the key to an exciting and different way of life. While creativity can be inborn, this can also be developed in a person. Those who already have it can improve on this talent. Everyone possesses a certain degree of creativity, though it varies from person to person. Some possess a greater level of creativity compared to others. The difference may be attributed to the environment. Uh, some environments offer greater opportunities or better venues that nurture creativity, while other environments are very restrictive in allowing flexibility to happen. So for the learning objectives of our topic for today, uh, after the discussion, you can explain the creative process of generating ideas. First, what is creativity? So the entrepreneur's secret for creating value in a marketplace is their application of creativity and innovation to solve problem and to exploit opportunities that people face every day. So when you say creativity, this is the ability to develop new ideas and to discover new ways of uh, looking at problems and opportunities. So creative ideas often arise when entrepreneurs look at something old and think of something new or different to do with it. So we have the following uh, ways which you can experience the creative process. So we have step number one, which is search for knowledge. So what does it mean? So this is the step to prepare yourself to become a knowledgeable entrepreneur. If you don't have the knowledge about how to start a business, this is the phase where you will acquire the necessary know-how. Acquisition of knowledge means being aware of present environment. This involves extensive reading of printed materials, surfing the net, watching televisions, listening to the radio, joining groups, traveling, and uh, etc. The next step is what we call the creation of idea. So it means that ideas may come from various means and sources. An idea can be created when you intentionally think of it or with it comes unexpectedly. From the knowledge obtained in groups, readings, and the like, you will learn how to connect various information and come up with a creative idea. The next is gathering of data. So the creation of the idea gives rise to problems that needs to be addressed and the questions that have to be answered. Data must be gathered to be able to understand the basic components of an idea, to give it a new twist and to make it fit a particular field. For example, if you have decided to establish an internet cafe in your community, you must identify the number of populations, the number of prospects, clients, power problems, possible complaints from neighbors, and the like. Step number four, we have implementation. So this is the stage where your idea is put to flesh. You must learn to maneuver situations to be able to realize your vision. And the last one is evaluation. So it means that the assessment of the merits and demerits of the project must be done to determine its viability. So evaluation will help you decide whether to expand or withdraw your investment. The next slide uh, is about the following, which can help enhance your creative mind. So the first one is relax and sleep. So it means that a tired body and mind hampers creativity. So it is, it is very important to relax and have enough sleep 
to give time for your body and mind to rejuvenate and restore themselves. New ideas will come in easily after the brain has had the necessary amount of rest. Ideas may even come in while doing a relaxing activity like swimming, in the beach, or attending a party. Next is daydream. So when you say daydream, uh, can be a source of creative ideas. It allows you to think beyond the ordinary. Daydreams can serve as impetus for you to move and work towards a certain goal. As an example, the concept of the airplane came after countless attempts of man or man's dreams of flight. Next is keep distance. So when you say keep distance, this is, this is getting used to the day-to-day -day grind limits your capacity to think of creative ideas. It is good to take time off from present environment and look at things from a distance. This will help you a different perspective that you haven't seen before. One strategy is to travel or to work in a different environment so you won't be influenced by the factors within. And last, be happy. Take life and problems lightly. A mind entertaining lots of problems is not productive. This person will not be able to come up with a bright and excellent idea. A peaceful state of mind is a fertile ground for ideas. So let's talk about types of innovative products and services. So the above aspect focus on the strategies you can use to come up with an innovation. So innovativeness is an advantage. This is because customers are attracted to innovative products and services. However, innovativeness alone does not guarantee success. There are also successful entrepreneurs who are not innovative, though innovative products and services are not the sole um, determinants of a successful business. You must strive to be an innovative and at the same time, a successful entrepreneur other determinants of success could be equality of customer relations, employer relations, and many others. So whether the business is just starting or has counted years in the industry, both could offer any of the following types of innovative products and services. So number one, introduction of a new products and services. So in this case, the entrepreneur will be offering new products and services that are not yet available in the market. So this involves a lot of risk because the unfamiliarity of the product might make the market wary of it. Uh, it is very important, therefore, to orient the market to the new product or service. Next is improvement of existing products and services. So it means that in this situation, we, uh, where a better version of an existing product or service is introduced. So the customers are already familiar with its basic use. So its main advantage lies in the novel um, feature which possesses uh, in other existing products or features that do not have. For example, the popular pearl shake is actually an improvement of the existing shakes being sold in the country. Its novel feature is its use of sago or what we call tapioca and of different flavors not traditionally used for shakes. Next, we can talk about spotting potential areas for innovation. So there are several ways to develop an innovative idea for a product or service. It is developed to create new concepts. The usual ideas are the ordinary ideas. Indeed, cooking up innovative ideas is very difficult. So the task would be easier by first identifying potential areas where innovation can happen. So potential areas where innovation can be spotted. So the first one is filling in unfilled need. So what does it mean? So these are the customer's demands which have not yet been fully satisfied, probably because of lack of supply or 
a limited number of supplies. Next, we have areas for improvement. So it means that uh, have the existing products and services retain the same old formula for such a long time. Perhaps they could serve the customers well if they have additional features that suit modern times. Next is areas for trends. So it means that what is in the in thing now with the rise in modern technology, what do customers need or what to update themselves with the times? After the cell phone business boom, what will happen next? Trends um, happen as a result of mass interest or clamor for something. So let's take, for example, the computer industry. Pensum 2 works well and is considered as the fast processor compared to either 486 or the typewriter. But why is there Pensum 3 now? So why is there a need to constantly upgrade products such as this? So the trend of microprocessors uh, such as this is toward faster processing time with double the memory capacity. So this trend is a response to the need for more efficient operation using the computer. Next is out of the box areas. So when you say uh, this one, this refers to the possibilities that nobody would overthink of because of the risk involved and the tendency to resist change. These are very fertile grounds for innovation. For example, the Philippines um, is suffering from very bad traffic conditions. So an out-of-the-box idea would be a concept of flying cars or perhaps with a demand for household help that, that is cheap and trustworthy. So a robot housekeeper would be perfect. So next, we can talk about entrepreneurial trends. So as mentioned earlier, trends could be considered as a potential for innovation. So below is a list of trends that are generally followed in business. Number one, we have globalization. So when you say globaliz globalization, uh, with the approval of the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade Services, or what we call GATT, the Philippines is faced with open opportunities with other countries. You may come up with business opportunities ranging from products to manpower services. Next, we have home-based businesses. So it means that with the difficulty of raising a family, the wives are now forced to augment the family income. So feeding the family is no longer the burden of the father alone, but it is becoming more the mutual responsibility of the parents. So since some mothers have to take care of their kids at home while their husband work outside, the home-based businesses are becoming popular. So in fact, the government is encouraging Filipinos to engage in this um, undertaking by providing financial and technical assistance. So more and more, we see housewives selling products like Tocino, Longanisa, hams right in their own homes. So at present, an increasing number of individuals put their own home-based business due to the difficulty of looking for jobs. Next is information technology. So it means that the internet is the most popular medium where business networking takes place. So technology has changed rapidly. Businesses have to cope with the changes taking place. Otherwise, they will end up um, obsolete in terms of office procedures and methods. With this come the changes in marketing strategies of businesses. Um, most businesses now are using the internet or internet to market their products and services. So this can be done by opening their own website. Next, uh, household services. So um, it means that because of uh, the hard times or more and more families have both parents working, because of this busy lifestyle, um, some families find less time to tend household chores, such as cleaning, landscaping, decorating, automobile detailing, and repairing. So laundry, shopping, and other time-saving services. So this could be a profitable business opportunity. The child-centered businesses also increase because of the increasing number of new birth and children living in single-parent household or in household where 
both parents work. So this could be in the form of nanny services, daycare centers, transportation services, sports activity centers, um, educational programs, and help for learning programs. So the opportunity in household services includes the opportunity in food services since the parents have less time to prepare meals at home. Next, we have um, the business services. So uh, it means that corporate downsizing or re-engineering and outsourcing have created many business opportunities. So they now have to rely on outside services for management consulting. So accounting, um, training and development, product design, corporate travel, uh, legal services, data processing, uh, voice messaging, and uh, marketing. So next we have the health and fitness. So as people want to live longer and remain young looking, many fitness products and services have been developed. Exercise salons, day spas, facial and skin clinics, um, home health care, medical products, prescriptions by mail, elderly travel clubs, as well as temporary help agencies for healthcare workers. Next, we have moneyless spending. So at present, the use of credit cards is popular in our country, uh, making shopping even without cash possible. Next, we also have the mobile communication. So although more of a want than a necessity, mobile phone have become popular with people among all ages. They have provided a means for people to get in touch wherever and whenever. So the demand for mobile phones has challenged mobile service providers to come up with better products and a more efficient services. And thus we have housing, of course. So uh, when you say housing, so it, the more and more people are migrating to the cities, creating a big problem of lack of space. So as a response to this, housing um, developers are coming out with a condominium style houses that do not take up much space. Okay, now, so let's talk about barriers to creativity. So as what mentioned before, it is dif difficult to come up with innovative products and uh, services despite the endless possibilities available. So what are the reasons why some entrepreneurs find it hard to produce creative products and services? So there are several reasons why entrepreneurs cannot innovate. So some of these reasons are the following. Number one, we have the resistance to change. So it means that some entrepreneurs are just contented to stay where they are. They are just contented with their existing products and services. For them, a change will just be a waste of time, money, and effort. Next, we have financial constraints. So it means that innovating means offering more than what the others could offer. So thus, additional products and service features will mean additional expenses. So some entrepreneurs would rather spend less and sell less rather than spend more and sell more. Next, we have the lack of manpower skills. So even of innovative ideas are present, the lack of competent manpower or people who are knowledgeable with the job would make innovation hard, if not impossible. Next, we have lack of government or management support. So the government oppositions make any innovative endeavor um, difficult to implement. For example, if management would not allow the purchase of a new equipment because of cost-cutting measures, most likely, there will be no improvement in the quality of the products and services. Next, moral and religious constraints. So it means that innovation can be hampered by moral and religious beliefs. It requires unbridled creative freedom, which will not be possible when an individual's um, thinking is bounded by a moral and religious beliefs. For example, Introducing miniskirts to Middle East women would not hold water since their religious belief would not allow them to wear such attire. Next, we have the lack of new information. So as what was mentioned before, an entrepreneur um, must 
prepare himself to become innovative. So the first thing that he has to do is to search for new knowledge. Um, the lack of new information may hamper the creation of an innovative um, idea. Next, we have the fear of the unknown. So it means that almost everyone is afraid of uncertainty. So this fear also affects um, risk taking entrepreneurs. So they fear that if they venture into something out of the ordinary, they might not know how to react. So some can withstand the fear, but some cannot. And last is threat to integrity. So it means that some entrepreneurs um, do not innovate because of their fear of failure. So if they fail, they will lose their credibility and integrity. Okay, now, so let's talk about how to enhance creativity now. So when you say creativity um, is necessary for innovation to happen. So thus, an entrepreneur must be creative. So entrepreneur can stimulate their own creativity and encourage it among workers by means of the following. So number one, role modeling. So when you say role modeling, in general, employees tend to take after their bosses. So a creative bo boss, therefore, will almost likely have creative people working for him. Next, we have setting standards. So the standard set by the employers will serve as a guide on how employees should work and on the quality of work they should deliver. So if creativity is the set standard, employees will inspire to work to reach that goal. If being creative is not an issue in the company, then nobody will bother to think or talk about it. Next, we have um, providing rewards. So these rewards may be monetary or non-monetary, such as uh, praise or recognition. So rewards may motivate employees to be creative. Then we also have providing support to the employees. So it means that employees will not be motivated to be creative if they know that nothing will come out of it. For creativity to flourish, it must be uh, nurtured and giving or given support. So the management should be well prepared in terms of budget and attitude to embrace any sign of creativity from the workers. So one, the, one of the supports that management can give is in the form of training uh, programs. So does uh, companies usually allot a big amount for seminars and conferences for the employees. Next, we also have the positive thinking. So it means that the entrepreneur must um, view problems as opportunities. So this can greatly influence the employees to do the same. And last is flexibility. So the manager should exercise flexibility in dealing with um, creative ideas. If one is very strict, employees must be reluctant to give suggestions because of fear of being rejected. Okay, to sum it up or uh, for the summary of our topic, so... Creativity is the ability to develop new ideas and to discover new ways of looking at problems and opportunities. So innovation is the ability to apply creative solutions to those problems and opportunities to enhance or to enrich people's life. So creative entrepreneurs come up with a lot of innovative ideas. So you can test um, how innovative you are by completing the innovation checklist questionnaires. So the steps that make up the creative process are the following. So search for knowledge, creation of idea, gathering of data, implementation and evaluation. And then to enhance um, a creative mind, an ent entrepreneur can do the following. So you can relax and sleep, daydream, keep distance and be happy. And a new or an existing business may engage in the introduction of new products and services or improving of existing products and services. So potential areas for innovation may be in the form of unfilled need. So areas for improvement, trends, and out-of-the-box ideas. Then um, certain barriers to creativity or resistance to change. So financial constraints, lack of manpower skills, lack of government or management support, 
moral and religious beliefs, lack of new information, fear of the unknown, and threat to integrity. So, meanwhile, an entrepreneur may enhance his creativity and encourage creativity from his workers through, uh, by means of role modeling, setting standard, providing rewards, providing support to the employees, thinking posit positively, and exercising flexibility. And then the current entrepreneurial trends could be in line with globalization, the home-based businesses, information services, household services, business services, health and fitness, money-less spending, um, mobile communication, and housing trend. So that's the end of our discussion for today. So hoping that you can now explain the the lesson or the continuation of the lesson, which is creativity and innovation. Don't forget to subscribe. I agree by Sir Dan and click the bell button. Um, thank you.